Hey everyone, this is Dr. Drizzle and welcome to the National Parks Adventure, fourth graders across America. Today we're in Death Valley National Park in California. And I'm not really sure what we're near because this place is huge and we're sort of out in the middle of it. We're here today with our new friend, Ranger Reese. Ranger Reese, thanks for having us here today. Absolutely, thanks for coming. Well, how did you get to this park? Tell us a little bit about your journey. Sure, so my Park Service career began in 2018 and I did not believe that I was going to be a park ranger growing up. I did a study abroad program in Mexico and that was during my college years and my professor was taking us around the Yucatan Peninsula and he would just talk about the ecology and the Mayan civilization and I thought, wow, my professor is getting paid to hike around and talk about nature. I would love to do that. So I. As soon as I got back to the States, I looked up internship opportunities within the National Park Service and just being in the outdoors. And I found an internship opportunity with the National Park Service, which brought me out to Mount Rainier National Park in Washington, all the way from Florida. So from one corner of the lower 48 to the other corner. And that progressed me through uh, Death Valley National Park, Yosemite National Park, Big Cypress National Preserve, and yeah, and the rest is kind of history. So here yeah, so I am. you're going to be here for a while. Yep, I'm here for at least a year. Do you have any um, aspirations of park hopping to more places? You know, I would love to visit other national parks. I'm not sure if I am ready to continue moving. I'm looking forward to staying planted in one park at this time and really diving deeper into the different resources. And resor when I say resources, I mean what is special about this place. So I'm really excited to learn more about Death Valley than what I've been able to accomplish in my previous seasons here in the park. Well, that leads us to our next question. So what is special? What do you already know about this place? Ooh, so Death Valley is known as the land of extremes. So one of the hottest places on earth, one of the driest places on earth, and one of the lowest points in the world. It's actually the lowest point in North America. And so it's at 282 feet below sea level at Badwater Basin. And it, the park extends all the way up to over 11,000 feet of elevation at Telescope Peak. So Death Valley is known as this really unusual, special place. And one of my most favorite things about Death Valley is the night skies. It's an international dark sky park. So it has incredible opportunities to do some stargazing, to see the Milky Way galaxy here at night when it's a new moon or when the moon has set in the evening. So really, really wonderful experiences here. So Death Valley, the name kind of puts you off a little bit, but how amazing <laughs> behind the name, there are so many things, including those dark skies, and we'll talk a little bit more about them. But let's talk a little bit about the flora and fauna, the plants and animals here. What can students find if they visit? Sure, so Death Valley, as ominous or as scary as that name sounds, there's a lot of life here in Death Valley. So we have lots of wildlife or animals. Most of them are nocturnal, so which means that they only come out at, at nighttime. And some very popular wildlife that folks might, or visitors might see here in our park include coyotes, the kit fox, uh, different types of rattlesnakes like the side, uh, sidewinder. <laughs> we also have burrows and a really special fish called the pupfish. It's a very, it's what we call endemic to the park, which means it can only be found here in Death Valley. So one of the species is known as the Devil's Hole pupfish, uh, found in the part of our park, which is located in Nevada, when most of Death Valley is located in California. 
As far as flora, we have a lot of different types of vegetation, really beautiful wildflowers that can bloom here and different species of cactus or cacti. Uh, so if we get rains here in the fall, that might be a good indicator that we, we may have a spectacular wildflower bloom in the spring, but we need those rains to continue into the spring to kind of help support the, the life for those plants. Well, tell us about the climate here. So we know it's one of the hottest places, but just in general, what is it like? Yeah, so Death Valley, it's, we're in what we know, uh, what we call the rain shadow. So uh, weather systems or clouds and storms will form over the Pacific Ocean. And as they're moving east, across the country, those clouds will try to, they'll move over different mountain ranges. So we have like the Coast Range, the Sierra Nevada, the Panamint Range. And as they move over these mountain ranges, they'll release some of that moisture in the form of precipitation, such as rain or snow. And as those clouds continue moving east, they lose more and more of that moisture until they reach Death Valley when they have no more precipitation or moisture left in them. So Death Valley, we don't see much, we don't see a lot of rain here in the park, except on those very unique uh, situa uh, times, of, times of years that happen every now and then. And it makes it really, really dry here. So I frequently use a nasal spray or a humidifier to kind of keep myself uh, moisturized in different parts uh, for, for just my own physical body. Well, that sort of makes me think about the hottest time. Have you been here during the hottest part of the, the year? I have not been here during the hottest time of the year, which would be during the summertime, but I am looking forward to it this upcoming summer when I will be living here. And I'm hoping to break some new records. So the record high temperature in the entire world was set on July 10th, and uh, July 10th 1913 here in Death Valley National Park, a record temperature 134 degrees Fahrenheit or 57 degrees Celsius. So we live on the east coast where we have a lot of humidity so that type of temperature would just put me on the ground. I'm assuming here it's just hot and not much humidity or tell us? Yeah so there's low humidity here in Death Valley so that temperature can be a little deceiving or deceptive. So because you're not sweating you're not realizing how much moisture uh, how much moisture you're losing in your body. So it's really important that you stay hydrated and continue eating different salty snacks to keep your energy levels up. Otherwise, heat exhaustion can creep up on visitors and individuals really, really quickly. So it's really important to monitor your own health. And during the summertime, we recommend visitors to not spend time outdoors. If they do, to really keep it to a very short period of time and otherwise seeking shelter in the shade and air conditioning, whether that's in, a vehicle, in their vehicle or inside of our visitor center. Okay, so if besides the dark skies, which are amazing, what else would you recommend people do here? Oh gosh, there is so much to we explore. We have time, we can make a list. Sure, well, what's really fascinating about Death Valley is that we are about the size of the state of Connecticut. So over 3 million acres of land. And it could take, I would spend days and days exploring the park, but we have a lot of great geological features. So a lot of great things to look at if you are a fan of rocks, I am, and so is my grandson, oh, yeah. Oliver. Excellent, yeah, I went to school for geology, so this was a great place to really see the landscape because there, are, there isn't a lot of, there aren't a lot of trees that would cover up the rocks and the, the landscape here. So a lot of neat features, some signs of volcanoes, what we call alluvial fans and different canyons to explore. We also have high country that you can explore with bristlecone, uh, bristlecone pines, some of the oldest trees in the world. I also love to explore the sand dunes. I grew up in Florida, so being near sand and the beaches are very familiar territory to me, uh, but our sand dunes are really fun to explore and sometimes to roll down. And if you have a sandboard, you can go sledding down some of our dunes. That sounds amazing. I also read 
that Death Valley is used as a backdrop for several movies. I, I saw some old, old movies that were filmed here. Have you seen anything since you've been here? Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm a big fan of Star Wars. So Death Valley is really well known for being the scene or being a set, if you will, for many uh, very various scenes in Star Wars. So definitely, if you ever have an opportunity to download the National Park Service app, there is a guided tour for different locations for some of those uh, scenes and movies. And that app is actually free, so kids could download that, and even if they weren't visiting in person, it's almost like a virtual visit to all the national parks. Absolutely, it's a great way to learn about the parks, uh, Death Valley included, and as you said, it's free, so a great tool to have that's very mobile and transportable. Well, thinking about apps and thinking about your desire as a ranger to make sure people are taking care of themselves here, let's issue our STEM challenge. So kids, you know that we like to use the United Nations Global Goals as our backdrop for solving problems at national parks. So we're gonna look at goal number three and a little bit of a marriage between goal three and goal 13. So this, we're at Furnace Creek visitor center and they have a um, air quality monitoring system here just like they have a weather uh, quality monitor monitoring system and it measures the ozone in the layers it also measures particles which basically means it tells you if the air is healthy or not so that's cool and that's a great way to go over and look at that but we want you to be very creative and out of the box so this is a technology engineering challenge we want you to design an app that people can carry with them. It could be into uh, their phone or it could be something that they wear as part of their clothing that will test the air around them and let them know if they're in a danger zone. Because heat exhaustion is something if you don't catch it quickly can turn quickly into a heat stroke. And we also know that if you're breathing unhealthy air, you may not know it at the moment until it's too late. So we want you to research Death Valley. We want you to research air quality in the ozone layer, and then you can create your own app. I would suggest you look at something like Google Slides first. So Google Slides allows you to build the app slide by slide, and then you can turn it into something that you could upload to iOS or to an Android. We think that you guys are the best people in the world to solve problems. We're trying to do it as adults, but sometimes our ideas are, are, are smaller because we know things have failed in the past and you don't have those ideas. You like to try and if you fail, you're okay with it. We want you to create a prototype that we can share with Ranger Reese and the other Rangers here. Um, remember that your, that your design doesn't have to be fully fledged out, but we want it to be something that is your idea and something that you can share. You're gonna tag me at Dacia92 on Twitter and then you're also going to see Death Valley's Twitter handle running across the screen. I can't wait to see what you create because I have family members that could really benefit from this type of app and I want to make sure that they're safe. How exciting would it be if the next great thing developed for uh, Death Valley and other places because it's not just something we could use at Death Valley came from kids watching this virtual experience. I would absolutely, we would all absolutely love that to have that inspiration stem from Death Valley National Park and from you all. So thank you for bringing us into this fold for yeah. that opportunity. So one of the things we do is this whole STEM challenge and on-demand STEM, but we also have kids out there that have been watching us for a couple years and now their desire is to wear that hat. So if you can look at the camera and give them any advice on how they can become a ranger somewhere in a national park. Sure, absolutely. So one of my favorite things to do is to continuously keep asking questions. Stay curious. If there's something you want to know, how does that work? What is the history behind that? Ask either an adult nearby or ask if you're visiting a park, ask a ranger. If you're at a museum, ask one of the folks that are working at the museum. Stay curious and get those answers to what you're curious to know and learn more about. But also, if you have an opportunity, I know Death Valley is a park known for its nature, but there are parks that are known for other resources like their history, the history of the people and the culture there. Keep asking questions to those individuals and uh, stay learning uh, continuously.
which is what we want them to do. We also share if your passion intersects your purpose, then you've got a job that you can that you can keep forever. Thank you so much for having us here today. Thank you for the weather not being too hot. I appreciate you working that out for us. We're excited to spend the day here to learn more about this amazing national park. Kids, we're dependent on you to be the, the people that save this earth because we're gonna get old quicker than he will. But we want you to help us out. So from Ranger Reese and Dr. Drizzle, we're out of here.